Hey friends, so we are here at a place by the name of Amuka and uh, we're at the grave of a holy rabbi from the from the Talmud I think it's from the year uh, maybe 200 or 300 and um Primarily, he was in Babylon, but then he eventually came to Israel, as most of those rabbis did. His name is Yonatan ben Uziel. And the story goes, the legend goes, that uh, he never got married. So here's this grave right here, and his tomb. And uh, people come from all over the world, all over Israel, that's for sure, to come pray at his kever, at his grave. For to find their intended, to find their bashered, uh, their zivug, their spouse. So I can tell you that I've uh, I've been here a few times in my life. It's probably like the fourth, maybe the fifth. Um, you know, it works. Let's put it that way. It works. It works. We don't always work. You know, at the end of the day, it's up to human beings to, you know, do the right thing. And uh, we don't o we don't always do the right thing. But I can assure you that it works. I can assure you of that. Again, we don't always work. We don't always do what we're supposed to do. But... Uh, coming here there's a there's a big power in this place so let's see let's take a look the entrance there's like a little ramp here to the cover as you can see very famous famous place famous ramp anywhere you go in Israel it's just like I love the smell you know it's just so fresh fresh air it feels like if you guys have been to like California, similar to California, but uh, I don't know. For me, it's, I'd rather have my own California that belongs to me, you know? California's not mine. This is mine. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we can, uh, we can get done this morning. Let's see. Get some powerful prayers in. So there's something. You know, people think it's a funny thing, a quirky thing to pray. I think it's like this, you know, you always see those evangelicals, you know. Huh? Ah, just a uh, tailing. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> this guy's off, just offer me to do like, um... You do like circles around, circles around seven times, and uh, basically, yeah, you circle around seven times, and then you uh, actually you have to go upstairs to do that. I think, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. So, if you go to any anthropologist, and you. Ask them, what is the mark that a people would have that they are indigenous to a particular land? And the most important thing, the most significant thing would probably be, they will tell you that the people who are indigenous to a certain land have stories about certain places, about rocks, about trees, about graves holy men that they've been telling not only these stories but they've been praying at these places for you know hundreds of thousands of years it doesn't actually matter that the places have any power or any you know if there is a tr the story is true sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't but what matters is that they've been telling these stories for thousands of years in the case of Jewish people we've been telling 
a bunch of stories about certain places in this land for thousands of years. We're talking about stuff in Judea and Samaria, or what's today considered beyond the Green Line, West Bank. We're talking about, uh, you know, stuff outside. Pretty much anywhere you go in this land, there are graves of holy men. There are places people come to to pray, to beseech, you know, God and to help them. And uh, right now we're one of those places. The name of the place is Amuka, and so there's a story, there's a legend that this holy man, he is buried here, we know that, but uh, what's the legend? The legend is that he never got married. He was a big, big, big rabbi, he learned all day, pretty much. His wife was a Torah, and he never got married. And so, because he never got married, people come here to pray at his grave. The other part of the legend, the other part is what I'm doing right now, which is after you've said your psalms, your tehillim, you, and if you're looking for your intended, you walk around the kever seven times. So, you know, again, these are quirks, these are legends, but, you know, people do them, and they've been doing them for at least thousands of years, so the fact that they've been doing them some credence to the fact that we're indigenous to this land, otherwise we're just a bunch of crazy people walking around covers, <laughs> and we are, but <laughs> to us they mean something, that means if they mean something to us, even if they have power, they don't have power that means we've, we're indigenous to this land, we don't go walking around covers <laughs> in other places well maybe in Queens you have the Lubavitcher but you don't walk around it but uh, that's the end of our, I guess, journey to Omuka. Very powerful stuff. Very powerful. So that's some psalms. You know, the rest is up to. The rest is up to God. The rest is up to Hashem. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. You know, we got a, quite a few friends here on Israel Beyond. And, you know, almost, almost 33,000. 32 and a half, I don't know. Lost count, kind of. And, uh... So, I'll let you guys know how it works out. <laughs> For now, I am off to Tzfat. The holy city of Tzfat. I'm going to visit a friend over there. He's uh, working in a yeshiva there. Get some lunch, catch up, you know. Then uh, we'll see, we'll see how the rest of the day pans out here. Should be good, thank God. Goodbye for now, Mr. Yonatan ben -Uziel. Today is the yard site of the Abir Yaakov. This is the great-grandfather of the Baba Sali. Big miracles. So, we're here in Sfat. Pulling the shofar. Beautiful view. Yeah. Victor, what's up? What's up? Connect <laughs> to Hashem, everybody. That's right. Can't really this, see the view, but... This is what nobody brings you Can you see Maron? about Israel. Can we see Meron from here? There's Possibly. That little, yeah, yeah. This is what nobody shows you. All these people that show you Israel, you know, they show you all this high-tech beaches and blah, blah, blah. It's nice. It's nice. It's good, but this is it. This is spot. This is probably one of the most holiest mystical places in the world, I would say. Definitely in Israel. The, rep the element that represents the city is air. It's the Yud of Hashem's name. Mm -hmm. And then Maron's the crown of the Yud. Uh -huh. And Tiberia is the He, and Jerusalem's mm -hmm. the Vav, and Hebron's the He. Mm -hmm. Tiberia is the wo water, yeah, water. Tiberia is the water, Hebron is the earth, and Jerusalem is the fire. Yeah. And here you have the air. So if a person like me, I'm a fire sign, so when I come here, the air fans my flames. Fans the flames. Mm -hmm. So 
funny because I'm I'm Aquarius, so I'm uh, I'm air. You are air, so, so you you're air. You when f- I go to Jerusalem, it's just like <laughs> I explode. Uh uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, you expand. In a good way. You expand, yeah. Yeah. So some people tell me they can't be in spot. It's difficult for them to be in spot. So different people have different energy. I love this place. This is great. And, uh, in a minute, we're gonna go to the Arizal Mikvah. It is the I guess the ritual bath. So usually ritual baths for men are like, if you walk in the water, it's very warm, lukewarm to hot. This particular one, I think it's one of the coldest. It's like frozen, basically. So for me, like, I'm not a fan of cold water. Some people are like, whatever, but I'm not a fan of it. It's so cold that it turns hot. It's, yeah, it's it's so hot that it's cold. It's like, you're, you're so right, you're almost to the left, you know? So basically, in my case, you know, what happens is I just jump in and you, you at least have to dip in three times. So I'm going to dip in three times super quickly and just jump out like a, one of those flying fish really quickly. Last week I did 310 dunks. That's no way. Yeah. You would be dead. Rabbi Nachman talks about it. It's, it's like 310 dunks. Like so, you, so you don't even feel your body at some point after, uh, after like a hundred of them. Yeah, 50. I mean, I wasn't really thinking. I was just meditating. Yeah, I was yeah, going through the sphere of meditation. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah. but when you come out of there, you just have so much crazy energy. It's yeah, awesome. I can only imagine. Yeah, they su- your your uh, Yitzhahora. Uh, your evil inclination. Or, don't even use the word evil inclination, bad inclination. Yeah, they say that uh, people... Oh, you can blow, you can blow, yeah, I'll tell you real quick. They say that people go to the Smikvah, basically the Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria, Yitzhak Luria, promised that people would... That he would see it that people make a complete repentance after going to this mikvah. So, you know, people try and try and try. It's hard, you know, we're all human beings, but he promised that he would help you make complete repentance. Yeah, so. Everything in his power. Yep. He's, he's got a lot of power up there. So. Very, very powerful. So, you want to blow the show for again? <laughs> <laughs> to arouse us to do truva. Catch on the flip side. This is, we make the descent now. Here in Tzfat, going down to the Arizal Mikvah. Quite cold, but quite holy. I say nothing in this life is, that's worth it is easy, so. This is one of those things. It's very quick though, it's not like going to college for four years, you know? Which is hard, but you're there for four years. Here it's like, you know, you dunk in for like literally what ten seconds? Yeah. One, two, three, you're out. Boom. And you're feeling better than ever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here you have the, some of the graves of Tzadikim here. Probably the most visited <coughs> uh, mm-hmm. mikvah in the world. Yeah. Literally the most visited bath in the world. <laughs> yeah. Or a ritual bath. It's a famous, very famous. And it's on a beautiful hill just the views alone should be enough to draw you here I'll go to the Arizal after mm-hmm. yeah we're gonna go to the uh, grave of the Arizal and the Ramak Azaluria Azul- Azul- and Moshe Corbera mm-hmm. and Rabbi Alkabetz big Kabbalist Rabbi Alkabetz was the one who wrote Lechadodi this is the song we sing for Kabbalah Shabbat every, every Shabbos Come the Shabbos Queen, the bride, and uh, Rabbi uh, Yosef Cairo is also here. Uh huh. The one who wrote uh, the Shulchan Aruch. This is basically the book that we read. I mean, that we 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 grab whenever we want to know a halacha. Real quick, we grab that book. Alrighty. Oh, <laughs> this is the entrance. And where's the actual? That's the mikvah right there. Ah? Uh, oh no, you can't pick there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is somebody here? So it's good. Nobody's nobody's uh, in their skivvies here, so we could tape. So this is the. Uh, this is kind of like reminds me of if you go to like a Russian bathhouse and they have that cold dunk, and you jump out real quick. 
Yeah, and you can see it's kind of like the condensation kind of deal. From all the rain? Yeah, this is all from the rain. It, was, it rained, Baruch Hashem. We peri- I actually came to the Kotel. Well, I was just trying to get a mincha. I didn't realize it was the prayer for rain with like a thousand yeah, Sephardic yeah, yeah. guys. I heard about that. And now we're going to the kever of the Arizal. Now we had a dunk in the mikvah, which was cold, I, I must say, but it wasn't as cold as Batayin, and it was, wasn't as cold as I was expecting, but it was still incredible, very refreshing. It's like you my, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. <coughs> I can't, can't wait to get back here like Shavuos time. Yeah. It'll be like yeah. May. It's literally like my favorite month. Like Bomer is, is, is awesome here. Oh, that is. Yeah, I haven't spent like Bomer here since like 2013. Are you going to camp if you do come? Yeah, usually yeah, I do, yeah. Awesome, usually I camp. The first time I didn't camp, the second time I camped. There yeah. we go. Where's Ari? Alright. There you we know go. the story how they how they like were buried over here? No. So you know Rabbi Moshe Corvera? Mm-hmm. So that was he was the Rebbe of Svat. He was like mm-hmm. the main Kabbalist. Mm-hmm. And then you know Chaim Vital and, yeah. and the Hebra. Chaim Vital is uh, a Rizal student. Yes. He wrote uh, ne- uh, what's it called? No. What's the book? It's hard. It's hard, So this is this is a Moshe Corbera. Uh huh. That's the Arizal right there. Uh huh. That's Shlomo Alphabets. Uh huh. And this is uh, Rav Moshe, who's the Arizal's son. There's uh-huh. like a tree coming out of him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, so the so Mark says to to uh, to his students, you know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna die soon, and mm-hmm. uh, and they say, Rebbe, like. How how do we know, mm-hmm. you know who's gonna who's gonna be our leader? Who's gonna be our rebbe? Mm-hmm. And he says, whoever sees the pillar of light at my funeral, mm-hmm. that's that that will be the sign of who's gonna be the next one. Mm-hmm. So um, they're, they're like bringing his body, like they're bringing him to a grave over here, uh-huh. and the Arizal says no. He's not supposed to be buried there. Don't you see that pillar of light over there? <laughs> what? So this is this is where the pillar of light was. Uh-huh. And so uh, there's something special about this spot right mm-hmm. here. So that's why both the mm-hmm. Ramach, mm-hmm. the Arizal, uh, Shalom Alphabets, there's a reason why they're, yeah. they're buried right here. What year did, you know, what year he passed away? Uh, These guys were lived? 15 something. Okay. Don't know exactly. So friends, once again, asking the question, the Jews belong in this, in this land, this country. We are now at a grave of a man who people come to pray at. They pray to Hashem, but they pray in the merit of this man. They've been doing it for at least 500 years. Mm-hmm. Or 400 something years. So, you have to ask, ask yourself the down question. B- down below here is, there were yeah. prophets buried here too. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's like thousands of years. This, you're, talk, you're talking 2,000 years, or maybe yeah. more. They say Hannah's sons are in that cave uh-huh. right down there. Incredible. So so now it's like oh there we go, there's the air and then see this is the blend of like the holy state and now we got the fighter jets over there. Got some bases here protecting the north from uh you know our friends the Hezbollah. We're having we're gonna have some serious problems now, Because Iran is uh you know, all the people are upset over there that Iran is the government's spending their all their money on the wrong things. So, so yeah, so ask yourself the question, why are people coming to pray in graves of people 500 years ago and their stories about them, even if they're, you know, legends, fables, whatever it is, but this is the mark that people are indigenous to this land. So we're going to pray. Gematria of Elohim, mm-hmm. 85, mm-hmm. and the Gematria of Teva, which means nature, mm-hmm. 85. Yeah.
you see Elohim for nature. Yeah. Well, Elohim is that's the that's the uh, Teva aspect of Hashem, right? That's the one attached to. So when you're looking at something like this, you're like, mm-hmm. Mamish experiencing God. Mm-hmm. The first time I ever went skiing in Killington, Vermont. I actually went skiing there before. So you go all the way up on the gondola to the top yeah. in the morning, and everything's covered in snow. Yeah. And there's nobody there. And you look around. It's like 8, 8 in the morning, 7.30 in the morning. And you say to yourself, they, there is no way that there's no God. That was actually the first time I was like, I don't know, 25 years old. I was like, yeah, you can't be an atheist, man. It's impossible. It's not logical to be an atheist. It's not logical. And look around you. Just look around you. Yeah. Have you looked around you? <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Stop for the night. For the, for the day, rather. Sun just set. So uh, this is the grave or the kever of the rabbi who... It's... It said he he was the person who wrote the Holy Zohar, the Book of Kabbalah, the what we call the secrets of the Torah, the mystical secrets of the Torah. Supposedly he wrote this this book around the time of 200 or 300 uh, CE, and uh, you know it was hidden away until it was uncovered in about the year I think at 1100 something like that. So this is his his grave, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. The Holy Tana, the Holy Rabbi from the Tanaitic Talmudic era, the first era. So we're going to go and we're going to pray at his grave. God willing, last time I was here, it's actually in Lagba Omer, which is his, which is, I believe is his yard site. I was here in 2013, last time I was here, for a big, there's a big party here, every year on his, on his yard site, and, um, so now, I'm just here to pray. So, let's go inside. So, so this is the place where normally on Lake Bomer, every year, this pit, or well, this parking lot turns into a pit. And as you can see, the, the, the bleachers are brought in. Actually, they're here. And this is where people dance. And up top, right here, these, these trailers is where the, uh, all the Hasidic Rebbe's, they light these giant bonfires with like olive oil and all this kind of stuff. And it's crazy. It's a crazy party here. You know, I'm gonna go down here because I haven't been here in like, it's very powerful for me. I haven't been here almost five years. Four and a half, to be exact. And, uh, yeah, this is where I dance. This is where, I'll show you guys where I, like, I thought I broke my ankle here. Water fountain's over there, so it was, like, right here, you know, as we come down from the, what's it called, the heights over there, and dancing right over here, and just, like, Yom Tov just steps on my ankle, and for the rest of the night, I'm just hobbling, uh, Pretty much like a few hours later I get on the bus a couple hours later and like it's just abject pain horrible pain and then I get back to yeshiva it's like 6 a.m. I go to sleep I wake up at 12 noon and basically all of the pain is gone like it never happened I don't know it's a miracle something like that I should have got probably should have gone to the hospital or I don't know what where but nothing, totally nothing, from total pain to total healing in a matter of like six hours, just slept it off, woke up, totally fine. So hopefully, what's today? Today is the today is January 8th or 7th, January 8th, I hope to be back here about four months from now, God willing. 
dancing a lug bomber. God willing, please Hashem.